What is up, you soup nuts? This is Jason from the Digital Soup Podcast, bringing you video number two in my Raspberry Pi 3 Retro Pi build. Um, if you saw the first video, you know why I'm doing this. I have no hopes of getting a Super NES classic console because I'm not going to wait in line, and you know I'm not. It's you know every time they have a pre-order, it's it's gone within an hour. So you know I just gave up. I'm like you know I'm gonna try to do one better because you know this is the digital soup. So what I'm doing is I am building my own little retro console. But this console here is not only gonna play a handful of Super Nintendo games, it's also gonna play NES games, Turbo Graphics 16 games, all the Sega games. I mean you can do just about anything with this build. So it's it's I'm really excited to get it up and going. And I wanted to share it with you, so let's go ahead and get started. First, as you see, there's my super tiny Tendo case from Collector Craft. I have already removed the screws, so there is no you watching me unscrew slowly, maybe playing some Benny Hill music in the background or something. I figured I'll just take care of it, and we will uh, dive right in. That's for you, Dave. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take off the case and see what's inside. Ah! There's a fan I was telling you about to help keep that Raspberry Pi cool. Um, as you can see, uh, we got ventilation uh, right down at the bottom too to help out. We have the four um, screw mounting uh, you know sockets there where I'm going to actually uh, adhere the board to the case. But that's the case. That's all that's in there. Like I said, there is no power uh, button, which would have been nice. Um, but if you could see right here, right where I'm pointing, that's where I can install a LED, power LED, and hook it up to the pins on the Raspberry Pi. So every time I power it on, the little light comes on. Now for this build, I wasn't going to do that, but I mean, it might be something I do in the future. So let's go ahead and let's close up this case, and I'm going to go ahead and put it to the side. And I pulled out the Raspberry Pi. Look at that. It's basically all ready to go. Boy, is that teeny, huh? That's just a teeny little board. Now, I'm going to adhere the two heat sinks to it. So I did decide that I will do this so you can watch. I don't know why. But uh, just so you know where to put them. Now, you have two different sizes. You have a small and a big one, as you can see there. Oh, I got it upside down. Crazy, Jason. All right, there's your two sizes. One goes on this small chip here, and one goes on the large chip. So let's go ahead and start putting these on. Peel this off right here. All right. And I don't think uh, the orientation of the uh, fins matters at all. So I'm just going to, you know, just put it on there anyway. Push it down a little bit. Make sure it's on. Boom. That one is done. Not too hard. Hopefully my hand wasn't too far, too much in the way so you couldn't see. And I'm just going to, you know, put the fins on the same way on this one just so they match. You know, I'm kind of crazy like that. A little feng shui, you know what I mean? Got to have everything orientated correctly. Press it down a little bit. And there we go. Uh, the two heat sinks are on there. That's not too difficult, huh? All right, so let's put this right here. Let me grab the case again. And we'll pull it down here. I'm going to pull this wire out of the way while we're doing this. And I'll show you exactly where to hook it up on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and put this on. And, of course, I was putting it in wrong. You just got to watch and see, you know, the way it has to go. And I was doing it wrong. But look, it just sits. Look at that. It is perfectly molded to this. Look at that. I, there's barely any movement in it. You know, go a little bit this way, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and screw in the screws, and uh, you are going to have to uh, watch me do this. Maybe I'll just uh, make some music here. No copyright infringement because I'm making that tune up. And I missed the hole. I missed the hole. Come on. There we go. Just think I got to do that three more times, people. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get the next one in. Works a little bit better if I just start it with my fingers, I think. Oh, man, here's the, here's the problem. Not only are my fingers uh, nice little chubs of sausage, but... And this is, I know this is going to be very sad, but I do have arthritis starting, so 
it makes it a little bit more difficult to use some of these tools. And let's see here. Come on, you can do it. This is some thrilling video here. All right. Well, so what I did, I was having trouble screwing those little screws in, like I said, uh, because a couple of uh, problems I have, you know, my fingers don't want to work all that well. And I bet you I dropped each of those screws about eight times. So what I did is I just went ahead and skipped ahead to this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, hook up the fan. Now you see this row of pins here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, hook them up to pins four and six. The red positive is going to go on the four, and the black negative is going to go on the six. So let's see if I can do this without getting my big old head in the way. And I should be able to. Alright. Slide her on down. There we go. So now they are hooked up to pins four and six. And let's see where we can tuck this wire down. Probably just something like this. We just don't want it to get in the way of the fan. All right. And because I'm not doing an LED, uh, this is it. This is it for the build. Uh, you were correct, listeners. It is a very simple build. There's not much you have to do. You put the board in, plug in the fan, and put on the two heat sinks. It is so simple. So let's go ahead and put the lid on. And while I screw in the screws i'm going to go ahead and pause this again and i'll show you what the finished product looks like all right we're back and as you can see there is the completed project it is my raspberry pi 3 in the super tiny tendo case so let's go ahead and uh, take a little tour of it um, let's take a look at the side here now see how all four uh, usb ports and the ethernet cable line perfectly up in this case beautiful let's take a look at the back all right and as you can see there uh, there is my mini USB power, the HDMI, and the headphone jack. And then look at that right there. Right there is where the micro uh, SD card goes. Easy access. And uh, a little bit of half now. Now that we have it together, it feels pretty good. And that is it for the build. Like I said, this was a short video. My next video is going to be longer. And the reason why I'm not combining it all right now is because I have to move all of my uh, recording equipment over to my television because we're hooking this up to a television, not a monitor. Because that's the whole point of this is to have it hooked up to your home uh, television so that you may play your retro games, all of them on your big screen TV. All right, and this is Jason signing off from Digital Soup Podcast, where you can get all of our new episodes every Tuesday at digitalsouppodcast.com. Uh, make sure you uh, like and subscribe to this video, and uh, head on over to iTunes, listen to all of our episodes, leave us a little bit of feedback, because we do love the feedback. And you know what? Leave some comments on this video itself on YouTube. Let me know uh, what you think of this build. Uh, difficulty level, I'm going to say, is basically a 1, uh, with 1 being the easiest and 10 being the hardest, because there's nothing to it. You just throw it in there, and you're done. So uh, until next video, later, Gators. Gators.